Next up will be Tara Brooks, and her uh, project is titled Elucidating the Mechanisms of Developmental Cell Death in the Retina Using Stem Cell Derived Organoids. Tara, please take it away. Thank you, Dr. Salcedo. Um, so as Dr. Salcedo said, my uh, capstone project was on elucidating the mechanisms of developmental cell death in the retina using stem cell derived organoids. First, I would like to acknowledge the Vergara Lab, especially Anne Viel and Luna Park. I would like to also acknowledge my capstone committee and the Modern Human Anatomy Program. So I'd like to start with some background. <clears throat> so historically, it's been difficult to study human development because so much of our knowledge of human development has come from animal models. Um, these animal models are, have given us a lot of important insights, but in some cases, the degree of conservation in humans is not known. However, recently, with the advent of human-induced pluripotent stem cell technology and the creation of human organoids, some of these questions can now be answered. <clears throat> organoids are 3D tissues derived from stem cells and grown in suspension that are told to follow a certain developmental pathway in order to become different uh, tissues or organs. So these cells can be taken from adults, for example, from a urine collection, and they're induced to turn back into an embryonic stem cell-like state. What makes organoids so exciting is that they have been shown to mimic what we know about the in vivo human development and tissue architecture. For my research, I used retinal organoids to study developmental human retina. The retina is a very complex laminated structure and it needs an incredibly specific architecture in order to be functional. And retinal organoids have been shown to self-assemble into the correct laminar structure and produce all seven functional cell types of the retina by following human in vivo developmental pathways. In the developing retina, two waves of cell death have been reported in many animal models. Um, these waves of cell death primarily affect retinal ganglion cells, which are the first cells in the retina to differentiate, and the only cells in the retina with axons that convey visual information back to the rest of the brain. The first wave of cell death is less well studied, um, but it is thought to regulate early cell numbers, um, which is very important for producing a functional retina. <clears throat> so since the first cell wave has never been studied in humans. My first question was, is this first wave of retinal ganglion cell death conserved in human development? Recently, there was a paper published um, proposing microglia-induced phagoptosis as a mechanism of retinal ganglion cell elimination during early wave in mice. So my second question was, if the first wave of cell death is conserved in humans, what mechanism eliminates retinal ganglion cells? <clears throat> First, um, we grew human-induced pluripotent stem cells, and they were directed to follow a neuronal lineage and were then further differentiated into 3D retinal tissue. The retinal organoids were collected at various time points during development. Um, they were fixed and cryosectioned, and then I immunostained them for markers of uh, retinal ganglion cells, microglia, and programmed cell death using immunohistochemistry. Next, I took images, um, immunofluorescent images on a confocal mic microscope, and finally did the analysis and quantification in Fiji. So my first result is that the developmental trough in human retinal ganglion cell numbers is reproduced in human retinal organoids. You can see on the immunofluorescent images at the top of the screen with red indicating retinal ganglion cells and on the graph that the number of retinal ganglion cells increases steadily then fall suddenly at day 57 and then increases steadily again. Uh, the time of this dip in retinal ganglion cell numbers is suggestive of an increase in cell death and is consistent with the developmental timing of the early wave of retinal ganglion cell death described in other vertebrates. We confirm these results um, with a second marker for retinal ganglion cells, which is PO4F2, uh, the results of which are shown on the second graph and very closely mimic uh, the results from our first study in the first graph. Second, microglia are not involved in the observed trough in retinal ganglion cell numbers. We used a post-mortem human retina as a positive control shown in these immunofluorescent images. The white arrows um, are pointing at the positive stained um, microglia in green. However, there was no positive staining for microglia um, in any of the retinal organoids at collection time point 57, which are shown in these bottom two immunofluorescent images. 
So these results suggest that microglia are absent from retinal organoids and cannot account for the dip in retinal ganglion cell numbers during the first wave of retinal ganglion cell death in humans. Finally, Cleave Caspase 3 um, dependent, or sorry, a Caspase 3 dependent programmed uh, cell death contributes to the peak of developmental retinal ganglion cell death. So on the immunofluorescent images, um, cleaved caspase 3 is indicative of programmed cell death and is stained green. Um, our results indicate very minimal levels of caspase 3 activation between days 42 and 50 of retinal organoid development. And then there is a sudden peak of caspase 3 activation at day 57 that is extremely significant. And this is seen also on the, uh, with the positive staining on the immunofluorescent image uh, C uh, at the top of the screen. Um, these results coincide with sudden decrease in ganglion cell numbers that we observed. And so they support the hypothesis that cap caspase 3 dependent cell death is playing a major role in the reduction of retinal ganglion cell numbers during the early wave of cell death in humans. This is have important conclusions, um, <clears throat> has important consequences for understanding not only the basic developmental processes, um, but also the basis of congenital retinal abnormalities that can lead to diseases of vision. For example, uh, Down syndrome, a condition that results in a supernumerary retina and is an area of further research in my lab. Um, moreover, this knowledge has potential impact um, for translational research using retinal organoid models. Um, this includes using organoids as a human model to study development and physiology, uh, disease modeling, pharmacological testing, and personalized medicine. Uh, thank you, and I can take questions now. Thank you, Tara. Uh, we do have time for any questions. Um, let's see, we have a question here. Is there any way to introduce microglia to the de development of retinal organoids during cell culture process? Um, that is an area of research currently. Our lab hasn't done that yet, but I know there are other labs on the Anschutz campus that are experimenting with that. Um, they do come from two different um, kind of embryonic origins, so you'd have to introduce kind of a new um, embryonic origin into the same culture. So we're not sure yet if that works, but we're hoping to try it. Um, and then let's see real quick. Uh, after a wave of ganglion cell apoptosis, if not microglia, what clears the apoptic uh, debris? In organoids, so in organoids, there's no mechanism to clear away um, dying debris. So it kind of collects in the center of the organoid. Um, so you can kind of see that when you grow the organoid. If you're looking at the whole organoid, there's a section that looks like kind of the laminated retina, and there's another section generally that has more of the debris that's left over that hasn't been cleared out. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all the time we have for questions. Thank you, Tara. Uh,